uh, is the audio good enough? Uh, I will start presenting myself uh, briefly. Uh, my name is Rodrigo Melo. I am a, an associate professor with uh, the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. Uh, I've been working with machine learning and especially the statistical learning theory uh, for a while. I'd say since 2009, around 2009. And that's basically uh, the area which is interested in defining uh, the boundaries for learning, proving learning, and uh, instead of just believing in experiments or in, in some results by chance, it brings, um, it brings some theoretical guarantees. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for confirming uh, that the audio is good. And, um, and we start presenting, yeah, what I've been doing. Uh, I'm going to tell a little about, about my book. Uh, with Professor Moacir Ponte. We've been working with the statistical learning theory for a while, as I mentioned before. Um, now I am in Paris as an invited professor uh, with the Telecom Paris Tech. Um, yeah, I think uh, we, we better start. And afterwards, you, you guys can send, I mean, questions or whatever you want. Maybe you could post uh, in the group and I uh, can answer afterwards without any kind of problem. Okay, guys, so let's start for real. Okay, uh, I'm going to show you some, some slides, but afterwards I'm going to uh, probably write some code and show some, some examples to you. Then I, I, all, I always think that's better to show some practical examples instead of just discussing with using slides or reading slides. So as I mentioned, my name is Rodrigo Melo. I'm here in Paris as an invited professor with the Telecom Paris Tech. And uh, I'm officially an associate professor with the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. And here's my, my, my email, my official email and my page. Okay. So, first of all, I'd like to thank very much Hardy, uh, who is responsible for this group, for the math, for data science, deep roots and large trees. He's been very kind, uh, invited me to, to provide this talk to you guys, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Okay, so to start, I think it's better to, to explain to you what's the statistical learning theory. In fact, people use a lot of uh, algorithms such as uh, KNN, SVM, J48, DWNN, uh, ID3, multilayer perceptron, okay, ID, and convolutional neural networks, TensorFlow, and so many stuff. But they, they never know if that's, that's going to work for real or if that's been working just by chance if it's like a, a result in their own data set, but when they, they, they bring that solution uh, to tackle real problems or real scenarios, if that's gonna, is gonna work properly. Okay, in that scenario, people usually work with uh, k-fold cross-validation strategies, leave one out strategies to, to, to test their classifiers or their regression functions and whatever. But in fact, how can you prove that those algorithms indeed learn? And that's, that's the main subject of this book uh, of mine. We, we've been much more interested in providing theoretical guarantees. People, people may look at that and think, okay, theory, theory is not nice, but in fact, Theory is necessary and it is very, very interesting, in fact, because we can apply it in practical scenarios and it's not that difficult to apply. So, to start, I'm going to tell you a little about Vapnik. Vapnik was, uh, is, in fact, this Russian guy who proposed the statistical learning theory. He defined the context of uh, supervised learning, basically, 
and his his definition comes from the generalization so for Vapnik the generalization G is in fact the difference a classifier F has uh, while being applied on a sample uh, and while being applied on the real world so this empirical risk term here is like the, the error uh, in, a, in a sample in a test sample for example so for example sometimes we, we train the classifier obtain a classifier F after uh, for example uh, inducing some model using multi-layer perceptron or whatever and that model F uh, is going to be tested on some some sample just that that was kept unknown for for our model and out of that we're going to get this empirical risk but that uh, this um, uh, this another term is the most important one in fact because this term is the one that tells us how that classifier is going to behave in the real world how it's going to it's going to respond when unknown data is given to it so for Vapnik, any time we have uh, an empirical risk that is close enough to the real risk or the risk for unknown data, every time both terms are very, very close, this absolute value is going to be close to zero. And that, that's the idea of generalization. So generalization is basically um, a concept of making possible to to kind of estimate the real risk the real error the error for for unknown examples using a test sample or using some sample we have access to that's that's the main concept of generalization so observed generalization does not necessarily imply in learning but it just tells us that uh, a classifier F um, has got a, a low empirical, uh, a, a empirical risk that's close to the expected one. So the empirical risk and expected risk are close enough. Uh, for example, if the risk is like 50% and the empirical risk is also 50%, generalization is going to be zero. And that means our classifier F generalizes. But that's not a good, uh, 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 let's say, that's not learning effect. That's just a term, uh, that's just a generalization uh, property that was satisfied. In fact, uh, Vepnik comes with two ideas, two main ideas. If uh, the empirical risk has to be as close as possible to the expected risk, but there is a second property that must be held. The empirical risk must be as low as possible or as small as possible. So if we have the empirical risk as close as possible to the real risk, we know how our classifier F is going to behave in the real world. The real world is here on the right side. And if it's very, very small, we are sure that uh, in the real world conditions, our classifier is going to respond similarly. It's, go it's going to have a, a small error or the smallest as possible error. Um, so let's go on. Uh, I'm going to give you a, an example, a very nice example, in my opinion. For example, uh, sometimes I'm teaching um, at university and some students just ask me, what's, what's a better, the best book? to study machine learning or what's the best book to start with uh, artificial intelligence or maybe data science and uh, and sometimes we give the book we say okay there is this book by bishop for example which is nice or maybe there's another one by uh, Shilkopf, uh and smola which is very very good but some but most of the students grab that book and they're going to study it by heart and have it like uh, have all those uh, lines, all those sentences, all those phrases as if they were uh, completely true without questioning. 
So they are going to overfit learning. What overfit means is that the student is going gonna, is gonna to know everything by the book. He's going to know everything that's inside that book. But that doesn't mean they are learning. That means basically they just have the book uh, by heart. They know it by heart. They know what's written there. So if we give like a test uh, using only questions which are in that particular book, they're going to hit it. They're going to have like the highest possible score, like 10 out of 10. Uh, but that's, that's because they overfitted. If we give like questions uh, from other books, probably they're going to they're gonna miss most of the questions because you were not able to generalize learning. They just overfitted uh, the knowledge using a single book. What's better? The best idea is to have like lots of books, study with those books, reading uh, something in the first book and after the second, trying to code something out of those those ideas provided in, in those books because if you don't code you have no idea what's what's happening actually you just know the concepts maybe or you think you know the concepts what's even worse uh, and the concept of generalization is basically that we don't want to have a classifier f that produces a, a, an empirical risk close to zero but in real world it, it is gonna is gonna miss like most of the cases is gonna fail miserably in that situation we would have like for example the empirical risk is zero but the the, the real risk is gonna be close to a hundred or a hundred percent or let's call one one is gonna be a hundred and that difference is gonna be equal to one and one is not good one means that we are not generalizing we're basically overfitting that's the definition of overfitting guys so overfitting means people are just memorizing and memorization is not is not the way to go with machine learning so many times people employ uh, techniques memor memorize uh, examples, memorize functions, memorize stuff, but when they apply in real world, the, the scenario is not the same, it's going to be different, and results are terrible in practice. Okay, uh, just to bring like uh, another example to, to you guys, for example, consider we have those black dots in here, we have one, two, three, four, five black dots in here, and we have two possible regression functions. And this is something very important to you. Every time you think about a classifier, a classifier is the same as a regression function or as a regressor. So here we have two regression functions and that's the same. So uh, what's, what's going to be the best function in the real world? It, is it the, the perfect matching function, which is like a high polynomial or a high order polynomial function, or is it the linear function? Uh, there is only one way to, to say, it's to assess it in the real world. So every time we have like this five point sample and we compute the risk in here or the error, here we are compu computing let's go back the empirical error we are computing the empirical risk so what's the real risk it's a risk measured for real data when we receive more data points here in the future that we we, we don't know yet so if we receive more points here is it, is it gonna be better to um, to carry on with this high order polynomial function or the linear function. We never know, we need to test. And that's the main point about generalization. We need to see if this function is going to be better or the second one. And that's what's called the bias variance dilemma. And that dilemma is uh, basically discussed in, in our book uh, about the, the machine learning foundation. I'm going to show you guys how that works in, pract uh, in, pract in practical problems. Uh, just to better define, consider this green area, this green box 
uh, has all infinite functions, a classifier, a